this prediction that's right up here. Or just yell at Larry Brooks like every other New York Ranger. <laughs> Last week, we dealt with the Tony D'Angelo drama, and there was a lot of it. And one of the reports is that he really has trouble dealing with losing. So the message here, it goes out to every single hockey parent, every single parent of a little leaguer, peewee football, um, whatever you call youth basketball, teach your kids how to lose. It's okay. Losing is part of the game. It's going to happen. You're doing them no favors. Life does not care. They are going to, it's going to attack the kids. It is going to teach them some hardships. And you know what? Life, while it might not keep score, it certainly is going to knock you down plenty of times. Is there was a, a guy that I know who was a senior on his high school hockey team and was cut in favor of freshmen. He was invited to come back and play on the practice squad. And eventually, if something opened up, he'd play. Yeah, that guy was me. I practiced, I played every single practice for a guy that wasn't guaranteed a roster spot. And what happened? I ended up being added for the playoffs. And in the championship game, I had the game tie and goal. We lost that game, but that's a, that's a different story. You got to teach kids adversity. Because if they don't know how to deal with adversity of like Tony D'Angelo's situation, being scratched for two games, and being taken off the top power play, and you're sitting there thinking, but I had 53 points. It's not always what you did. Sometimes it's what you do. How are they going to deal with getting a bad grade in school, getting dumped by a boyfriend or girlfriend? Or how are they going to deal with life when a parent is lost? Losses are a good thing that needs to come back. That It's just that plain and simple. Because if I know how to lose... I know how to come back and play the next game and win. Yeah, I, I agree with all that. And I can definitely relate to the losses part. So <laughs> <laughs> we've, we've, we've had plenty of them in our lives. Yeah. yeah. It's, and it, it's, it's one of those things I've, I've been on this rant about it, but now seeing, hearing about that with Tony last week on NHL radio as I was going home. I just rolled my eyes because that's a seed that's been planted. All the kids that are like the generation of, of, I never want to make my kid feel bad. Eventually you're going to have to, because yeah, your kid's going to go out in the world and he's going to feel bad. You got to teach him how to deal with that. Or look at Cam Newton, Cam Newton, when he was the MVP, uh, I think they were 15 and one, maybe 14 and two. I forget at the moment right now. You couldn't find a camera to keep away from him. And then what happens? He ends up going to the Super Bowl, getting beat by Denver, having his 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 sweatshirt over his over his head and not being able to say things. The guy is one of the worst postgame press conferences when he loses, when he wins. Yeah. Fantastic. We got to stop this. We, we, we got to stop this. We're, we're becoming a nation of front runners. I get the whole concept of like the participation trophies. And I get why people don't want to like, you know, shun that away. But I, I also think that you're, you're right. Like as much as, you know, you don't want to, you know, oh, well, you know, you tried, you know, here you go. But you also want to you want to teach people that it is OK to lose and it, it, it's OK to learn from it. And, and on, on the best example I've ever heard of this was Wayne Gretzky talking about their first cup win in Edmonton and what led to it. And he, he said that if we didn't lose to the Islanders in 83, we would have never knew what it took to win that cup. And that sometimes you may not win the battle or you may not win the battle, but you can still win the war, even though you lose a battle. What's a battle? <laughs> Let's go. Gretzky not, and, and the Oilers, they got swept. They got beat. Yeah. And Gretzky, Gretzky telling the story about walking by the Islanders locker room 
and he expected to see all the guys cheering and celebrating. And they and were just all somber. Of them, they were somber. They had ice packs all over each one of them. And he looked over and just went, that's what it takes to win the Stanley Cup. And he did. And again, where this comes back to again is, is Tom Brady. Tom Brady, when he was in Michigan, wasn't guaranteed his job. Drew Henson had his job. Tom Brady fought and got his job. Drew Henson, oh my God. And what happened when he went to the, the NFL? He was a six-round draft pick, the backup quarterback to the franchise Drew, uh, Drew Bledsoe. I almost said Drew Brees, but it's Drew Bledsoe. And what happens? Mo Lewis knocks out Drew Bledsoe. That was the worst thing that happened to the NFL because Tom Brady, <laughs> Tom Brady ends up being the greatest quarterback in history. So it's sort of like, you know, you get this, you get the guys that put in the effort. And one of the greatest lines Matt Cullen ever said about Sidney Crosby, somebody asked him, what makes Sidney Crosby so good? He said, he has Hall of Fame talent, but he puts in the work of a fourth liner trying to make the lineup. Yeah. That's what it takes. Absolutely. You have that's what it takes. And grind every day. The and uh, the great ones always do this. The great ones always find ways to improve and adapt with the time. Sidney Crosby when he first came in was a speedster. He was incredibly talented. He was lighter, but what did he do? The guy that's adapted with the times and he's become a a, a better player, but the great ones will always find a way and they always put in the work to continue to make themselves better. That's what makes Sidney Crosby as great as he is. Did you like that video? Of course you did. So why not check out some more of our content? You can check the playlist right here or right here.